I'm just trying to see what I can say and what I should not say from the pulpit. I've had so many experiences along this line, and um, I'm trying to filter what to tell you. Hebrews chapter 11, we'll do a reading quickly. Hebrews 11. You know, you know uh, the texture of Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, faith is defined. And um, the evidence of a man that walks in faith is also defined. It says, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. That means if I walk by faith, are you with me? My life will produce, a, will produce results, will produce manifestations that my generation will acknowledge that indeed this man knows God. There will be evidences that my life will produce that will make my generation confirm the fact that indeed he knows God. That kind of manifestation is an accumulation of a consistent work with God which is based on faith. And this consistent work with God which is based on faith cannot be less than 10 years of consistently working with God to be able to produce that stature of manifestation that your generation will acknowledge that indeed you are working with God. Are you with me? 10 years, nothing less than that. And these 10 years, I got it from two significant church leaders. One of them is Archbishop Benson Dahosa. He, he told us about 10 years that if you can model the life of faith, uh, you are entrenched in your convictions for 10 years and you are making deliberate effort on a daily basis to navigate towards the direction that God has pointed out to you. In 10 years time, your life will produce a result that your generation will reckon that indeed it was God you were working with. He said that and watch my knee, my, my man, he also said that. So, so I don't have scripture for that. I just have the testimonies of respected leaders that I follow as the basis of my conviction on that matter. And in my own small life, you know, my life is not too big. It's very small, <laughs> very modest, very humble. You know my story. Um, any need for me to tell you, my, you know my story. Well, in order for us to begin to do the big things that we have started doing, it took us 12 years of working consistently with God over and against obvious contradictions. And those of you that know our humble background, you know the things we had to face. We had to be mad people to believe the things that God has told us in the face of the circumstances that we had to face. Um, in the last conference that we had in the month of November, some our pastors in Ghana <laughs> made their way to the tent. And they seemed to recognize the tent because they've been watching it from Ghana, and they felt that place was a big place. And when they went there, they said, Jesus, this is where this man has been preaching all this things. So they, they laid on the altar, especially an impartation, because it's not reasonable for you to believe that anything good could come out of that place. If that is the place, then something more than a drug, God injected us with something more than COVID vaccine that, that made us believe that... <laughs> It took, it took, before we started doing the big things, it took 12 to 14 years. So I can concur with the statement of the elders that it will take about 10 years. Do you know the opposition we faced in that place? I know some of you know, most of you know. It's you, man. You need to be crazy, drunk with the Holy Ghost for you to believe. Most of you give up too quickly, and that's why your life doesn't produce a good report. So we have, come to, we have brought you to a clinic where we inject people so that you can be crazy, crazy for the Holy Ghost, crazy enough to believe the things that God is putting before your face. And when God really wants to get you convinced, he knows how to visit you in your dream. When you are powerless in your dream, he will show you the pictures one after the other. Because if you were to come in the natural to show you, we argue, so he knocks you off. Just like he knocked Adam off before he, he did the surgery that produced Eve. If the guy was awake, he would have contended. So he knows how to do it. You remember Zechariah? The angel was telling him about several things that God had determined to do. 
And the guy was asking too many questions. It was obvious that Zachariah was going to use his mouth to contend with what God wanted to do. So just be dumb for now. So many times God will put you to sleep so that you will not have any ability to interfere with the things he wants to show you. And he will keep showing you until what he's showing you distills into your soul. And there is nothing, no contradiction in the natural will be strong enough to contend with that which has found place in your inner man. God had to inject us again and again. It took like 10 years. I was asking some of our brothers that came from the United States, you know what it means to travel from the United States to come to my country? We don't have an airport. Are you aware of this? Somebody drops in Lagos because if you are using Delta Airlines, you are going to fly from Atlanta to Lagos. That's how many hours? 10 hours from Atlanta to Lagos. Then you have you ever been cleared into Nigeria from the Lagos airport? You don't know the experience. Then you finish with that. You take a hotel, stay, sleep overnight, take a flight to Abuja, and then begin a four, five-hour journey to come to Benue State. You need to be injected to be able to do that. So I, I got all the guys from America into my office. I said, okay, why are you here? What happened? And each of them began to tell their stories and, you know, I was doing an analysis from all the stories that were coming, all the feedbacks that were coming. And um, guys from Canada, do you know? <laughs> I, I know you, you, can't, you can't imagine what I'm talking about. You are not as much a traveler as I am, so you don't know what it takes to go to Canada, what it takes to travel from Canada to come to this place. So I, I called them. I said, hey, what happened? Testimony after. Do you know?